Hey guys, it's Ashley. Today I want to show you how I set up my teacher planner for virtual learning for my son. So he is in second grade and I picked up this planner from Joann's. It is a teacher layout. It is undated and it is from the Happy Planner. I don't think that these are still available. I will try to find a link. If so, it will be in the description box. But what I do is I actually have a rolling cart that is set up for his virtual learning and inside of that cart I have this little bucket this little bin thing that actually come from Ikea and I keep all of my teacher and student stickers inside of there and um, like the brights one and, and little things like that that I can use inside of this planner and so I keep all of that together so it's easy for me to access I'm not constantly having to drag out sticker books and dig through di different sticker books to find what I'm looking for now this is actually Monday morning and the way I'm going to do this is show you day by day how I use this planner it's actually a part of my morning routine now. I get up and I plan, well, I don't plan it. His teachers already have it planned, but I get on Google Classroom and I'm looking at the assignments that he has to do for the week. And then I go through and I write them down inside of this planner. Now this planner is set up uh, to be for Monday through Friday, which is actually great. Like that would work out fantastic, but I like to redate it. So we also have Saturday and Sunday. And the reason why I do this is on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, there are still some habits that I have Levi do, like reading. He needs to read his books over the weekend. He needs to create stuff over the weekend. Sometimes we, we practice math over the weekend. It just kind of depends uh, what we're doing, but I like to have it Monday through Sunday. So that's what the hexagons are for. It's how I'm redating it. So the hexagons is the categories for class, and I'll explain those here shortly. And then here at the top, you'll see where I just wrote in blue. That's for Monday. The next column's Tuesday, and then the next column's Wednesday, so on and so forth. That way it's dated for the entire week. For the categories for the hexagons, the first one is a general to-do list, and this is typically for me. This is things that I need to get done. This could be his Google Meets that we have, uh, different things like that. The second one is for uh, reading, spelling, and language arts. The third one is for his math class. The fourth one is for science and social studies. And then the bottom one, I made this one for routines. These are things that we do on a daily basis, and that way I can make sure that I'm checking them off. Now here I'm just going to take a sticky note and put it down for Tuesday and one down for Friday. We have a Google Meet on Tuesday and then Friday he has some quizzes. Like I said, I get into this planner every morning as a part of my morning routine. So I'm not actually putting the stickers down for the days just yet. I mean I will here in just a minute because it is Monday morning when I'm setting this up, which is unusual. Normally I get this thing ready on the weekend, but I didn't this time. I got it ready Monday morning, so I will add those stickers for those categories, or for those uh, tasks on Tuesday morning and then on Friday morning. Here, I'm taking a mild liner and I'm creating check boxes for the tasks that we have to do every single day. This would be like his AR tests, uh, reading, his spelling words. I always want him to create something every single day. We do so much work on the computer right now that I want him to actually do more physical things. So this could be painting, coloring, cutting out stuff, like making a mess basically. Just so he's creating, he's getting creative and it's not constantly like typing and looking at a computer screen all day. It kind of changes it up for us. So here I'm going to get out my laptop. This is where I pull up Google Classroom and I go through each class 
and I look at the different assignments that he has for that day. And this is when I also decorate and I'll add little fun stickers. Uh, for most weeks, I've been kind of doing this like color scheme where like with the blue hexagon, the stickers for that entire week are blue. With the purple hexagon, the stickers for that entire week are for the rest of the week are purple. And that's been kind of fun. It's just a way for me to to get creative and to have fun with it. So here I'm just getting everything wrote down that he needs to do for Monday for each class. So since I started using this teacher planner and doing this like daily planning where I'm adding stickers every day, I've actually really started to enjoy it. Actually, I've carried that over into my regular planner to where I'm actually getting to play with my stickers a little bit more. And it's making me use stickers that I would have not normally used. So I'm really enjoying that. If you guys normally like me and you set up your spread for the entire week in advance, which there's nothing wrong with that. I've done that for years now. But if you've done that and you kind of want to change things up a little bit, make it to where like every morning you have like 10 or 15 minutes or even at night to do it for the next day where you have like 10 or 15 minutes to plan out your day, use different stickers. And I don't know, it's really fun. Like you get to, you get, it feels like you kind of get to be more creative, right? You just have to do it to kind of understand what the heck I'm talking about. But I really, really enjoyed this style planning, just doing it every day. It lets me get a little bit more creative, use more stickers that I normally wouldn't use. And like I said, I get to I get to play in my stickers more. So that's a plus, right? We all want to play in our stickers more. So now the planner is set up for the entire week as far as redating it goes and it's also set up for Monday for all of his assignments that we need to do. So we are going to get started on that, get those assignments completed, and then I will show you each day of the week how I get everything ready for that day. This is Tuesday morning. And I'm going to get my laptop out, pull up Google Classroom, and I'm going to look at the assignments that his teachers have posted. And I'm just going to fill it in, adding the stickers, um, taking the sticky note off, and putting that reminder in that we have a Google Meet. Basically, like I said, getting this set up for the entire day for Tuesday. Usually for his reading, spelling, and language arts class, I, tr I don't use a ton of different stickers for this because honestly there's just so much work that I need all the space that I can get inside of that little box. And that's kind of like why I like doing this on a day-to-day -day basis because if I already have all these stickers placed and then I'm like, oh crap, I don't have enough room, then I have to move stickers around and stuff. So it's just kind of nice to do this as I go to see how many assignments he has 
if I can add a little bit more stickers or if I need to pull back and not add as many or any at all for that matter. Also, you guys may hear my computer in the background. It is like having a fit right now. It gets so mad at me whenever I'm editing videos. <laughs> it goes into like high wind mode. Tuesday is all set up, ready to go for the day, and now this is Wednesday, so I'll be getting Wednesday set up and ready to go. For this week I'm mainly using one sticker book. It is the Bright Sticker Book and this is also from the Happy Planner. I really love this sticker book because the colors are fun, they're bright, but there's also a lot of functional stickers in here that you can use for so many different things. And I just want to remind you guys that you don't have to have the teacher sticker books or the student ones to do this kind of thing. You can really use any sticker books that you want. And also as a reminder, you can use the teacher sticker books even if you're not a teacher. I mean, I know virtual learning, we've kind of become teachers, right? Because we are teaching our children from home, but we're not like grading papers and that kind of thing, but you could still use those sticker books. Same thing goes for the student ones. Even though we're kind of like the, the teachers at home, um, that's not to take away from every, I mean, my our teachers at our school are doing so much hard work. I can't even imagine how overwhelmed and stressed out they are with trying to do all this, but even though we're not doing all those things, we can still use those sticker books. So it's totally up to you. Get creative, use whatever sticker books you have. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy a ton of new sticker books to be able to do something like this. Get creative, use the ones that you have and try to make them work for you and your family. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but the planner size that I have is a classic. So if you're new, the Happy Planner has three different sizes. There's a mini, a classic, and a big. The big is size for a sheet of paper. The classic is a little bit smaller, and then obviously the mini is smaller than that. I personally love the classic size. I've not been inside of a big teacher planner. I'm sure that there would be plenty of room, and I wouldn't have to uh, try to cram so much into one little space, but I just like the classic size for most of my planners. I'm currently on a classic kick. I really love mini too though, I will say that. Let me know if you guys are, like what's your favorite size happy planner? Is it big, classic, or mini? All right, now Wednesday is all set up and ready to go, so we are gonna move on to Thursday. This is Thursday morning. I actually left my planner set out on the desk right there so I didn't have to reopen it or whatever, but it was all ready to go. This is Thursday and we are gonna get everything, basically the same thing over and over again, Monday through Friday. So we're gonna get everything set up. This usually is where I start to decorate the weekend, add some fun little stickers to it. Uh, sometimes I don't do this till Friday. Sometimes I do this at the beginning of the week. It just kind of depends. If I see a sticker and I'm like, oh, I love that, that would be cute for the weekend, I go ahead and put it down then. I don't need all of the boxes on the weekend. I really just need that bottom one. Remember down at the bottom that I said is for routines. I really just need that one. That way I can make sure we are we are getting the things done on the weekend that we need to like reading and creating and that kind of thing. Be myself, or I could be 
someone else No one's stopping you now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive Drive a faster car. Lay my troubles to rest. Blow the smoke through my cigarette. City lights of the fire. And I know that this is my time now. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. So try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car, nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can... Alright, Thursday is done, and now we are moving on to Friday morning getting it set up for the day. Friday is usually whenever he has quizzes. He does sometimes have quizzes during the like middle of the week. Typically it's on Friday. A lot of his quizzes are over his spelling words and vocabulary and that kind of thing. And then he will have a math quiz. I will say social studies and science so far has been fairly easy and it's been really fun. And so I like to, we get the hardest thing done first. So we always start with like his spelling, reading, and language arts. That seems to have the most work. That seems to be the hardest. Um, so we get that finished first, and then we take a break, and then we come back and we do something fun. And usually this is with science or social studies. We take a little break, and then we come back and we get his math finished up. And then we get his stuff finished up that he needs to do as far as his routines go. So if he needs to take his AR test, if he's got books he needs to read, if he needs to journal, which... I don't know if I mentioned this already, but um, I didn't end up check marking any of the journal spots for this week because his teachers hadn't posted journals. And I think that they had mentioned that this week they were going to take it off for journals and start it back up next week. I just didn't think about it or whatever, so I wrote journal down. We didn't end up checking it off because he didn't have to do it. So there we go. That is how I use my teacher planner for virtual learning, how I set it up every day, how I get it prepped and ready to go for the week. I'm honestly enjoying this aspect of it. This is probably the best part of the virtual learning, right, is getting to play in my planner. So I'm really loving it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Come hang out with me on Instagram, and I will see you in the next video.